So you've just been arrested, and now you're in front of a judge who has to decide whether you're going to go home or go to jail. Let's talk about bail. Welcome to the channel. My name is Nate the Lawyer. If you are new here, this is where we talk about the law and the facts. Now, if you are about that life, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you like what you hear. Today, we are talking about bail in the United States. What is bail? How does it work? Let's start with defining bail. Bail is something of value given to the court in exchange for releasing the defendant from jail and the defendant's promise to come back to the subsequent court dates. Now, both the U.S. Constitution and most state constitutions prohibit excessive bail. Let's look at the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution. It reads, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. So now your next question is, what is excessive bail? Well, Excessive bail is a figure higher than an amount reasonably calculated to ensure the asserted government interest of either guaranteeing that the accused will stand trial and submit to sentencing if found guilty or public safety. See, the court uses factors to assess whether a person should receive bail. The court generally asks about the defendant's criminal history, ties to the community, how much money the defendant makes. Is the defendant dangerous? What's the severity of the crime? And a list of other factors. After the assessment of these factors, the court is either going to release the defendant on their own recognizance, which means let the defendant go with no bail, or the court will set a bail amount, requiring the defendant to pay some amount to get released. Or the court can deny bail and hold the defendant in custody while they are on trial. Now let's go back to the 90s and look at the O.J. Simpson case. He had no criminal history, very strong ties to the community, and O.J. was very wealthy. Now, O.J. Simpson was charged with the brutal homicide of his ex-wife and another individual, and he was caught fleeing the jurisdiction with $10,000 in cash, passports, a wig, and a fake mustache in his car. Would you give O.J. bail? No. Oh. The court didn't in this case because he was a very high flight risk. Let's say the court gives a defendant $10,000 bail. What are your options? Well, option one, I like to call cash is king. See, if you got 10K, you got your freedom. See, the court will hold your $10,000. And after the unpleasantness of a trial is concluded, you get your money back, minus any fees, surcharges, unpaid fines, etc. And assuming you made all subsequent court appearances. Your second option, is bail. Now, if you don't have $10,000 worth of cash lying around, like most people do, you have to go to a bail bondsman or a bondswoman or a bonds person, whenever the PC way of saying it is. Now, for a fee of 10% of your bail amount, in this case, $1,000, and collateral like your car or a link to your house, you can get out of jail on bail. And you have to understand that 10% fee or $1,000 is non-refundable. You don't get that back. Now, the bail bonds industry is a two to three billion dollar a year industry. You may have seen some of their commercials. Here's one I like. I'm Bishop Barry of Jesus Christ Bail Bonds. 410-292-3029. You're locked up and afraid. Bail out. Bail out. Bail out. Bail out. Bail out. Bail out. Jesus Christ Bail Bonds. One of the more interesting things about the bail system here in the United States is that if you skip out on your court dates. The collateral and cash that you posted for bail now becomes your bounty. And in this case, we're talking about $10,000. And then the bail bondsman literally hires bounty hunters to hunt for you so they can claim that bounty. Now, when they eventually find you, the bounty hunters will get the bounty, which is the bail amount, and continue to get rich. Now, there's one important thing that I haven't touched on in this video that I wanna to touch on now, and that is these defendants are legally innocent right? They haven't been convicted of anything. In the United States, we have the presumption of innocence. Hell, an arrest is just an allegation. The second issue that most people have with the bail system is that it disproportionately affects the poor and the needy more than the rich. Now, you can naturally see how this happens when you force innocent people to pay for their freedom. The more cash you have, the more freedom it buys. So now that you know the details, what do you think about the American bail system? Leave your comments below. Let me know how you feel. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.